Pass the Puck, tactical videos for your hockey team. Now, in this video, we're going to talk about playing shorthanded, four on five, part three, the aggressive phase. Now, before we get started, let's do a little reviewing. In our last video, part two, we talked about the wingers on both sides picking up their green man as they enter the attacking zone, thus leaving the centerman with the puck to come into the attacking zone by himself. We talked about as the puck carrier approaches the blue line, the yellow players are going to gently angle them over the blue line, thus causing them to go offside and the attack stops. So here you see a face-off being held in the neutral zone on the near side. Now, there are mainly two types of four on five tactics. They are aggressive and passive. Both are performed in phases. Phase one, the aggressive phase. In this phase, you do not allow the other team to set up in their attack mode. Okay, what does that mean? Let's say the green team centerman wins the draw back to his defenseman. Odds are pretty good that that defenseman will move towards open ice and dump it. First, let me say I'm not a big fan of dump and chase. As far as I'm concerned, a dump and chase is nothing than a turnover. Yes, I can hear it now. You don't know what the heck you're talking about. Time and time again, I have said the team that controls the puck wins. No. I have never said the team that gives the puck away wins. So now you're saying, okay, Mr. NHL coach, what's the answer? Simple, regroup. I will explain more on this in our five on four man advantage video. So now it becomes a foot race. First one to the puck wins. Now notice I have my yellow right defenseman heading towards the goal line for puck support. Now, as he heads towards the goal line, I want my yellow right defenseman to look into the oncoming glass to see the location of these two players. This way, he doesn't have to turn his head to take a picture as he heads into the corner. This way, he can see if the player is going to move to the inside or the outside. Improv time. Now. When you're rushing into the corner against the board, be the first one there. And if you get there before the green player, don't come up the strong side. I can't tell you how many times I've seen players rush into the corner, pick up the puck, turn up the strong side, and lose it because they try to throw it out here and the two defensemen stop it or the centermen stop it, and now you're screwed. So move the puck towards the weak side. Now, let's just say this green player gets there first to the puck. I want my yellow defenseman on him, and I want my centerman here to come in and assist. I want two guys on that green puck carrier. A lot of coaches get their yellow players to form a box once the puck gets into the zone. That is a mistake. If the green team has complete control of the puck, yes, then I can understand you getting ready to set up in a defensive square. But until they have complete control, you're on them with two guys like white on rice. This is called the aggressive phase. It's the difference between a high caliber team and a weak one. As a yellow defenseman, the whole purpose is to keep this guy from getting the puck. Don't be afraid to get in here and mix it up but the success portion of the aggressive phase is this centerman making sure he goes in there and helps so it becomes two on one. Now, let's say my yellow defenseman gets there first. I want him or her to quickly shovel that puck over to his or her defensive partner that's puck supporting. Now, the very second, the yellow right defenseman gets the puck. I want them to take one stride and load up for a lob of the puck into this target area. Why? Improv time. 
The whole purpose of this move is not to ice the puck. Why? Because if you ice the puck, the whistle blown and the puck comes all the way back here for another face-off in your defensive zone. So let time work for you. You want it to drop right here in this area, so this way the goalie has to pick it up and set it up for his players that are coming back to get it. But what is this doing for you? It's eating time off the clock. But that's not going to happen if you ice it and it comes all the way back here. Yes, I know some high school players don't have that problem. They could ice it all day long. Now, the other reason why I like this area of this zone is because it's in the upper slot area. I can't tell you how many times I've seen the puck lobbed into this area and bounce, bounce, bounce into the net. The other reason why we want to lob it here without icing is so this way the green players have to come back here and pick it up, allowing the yellow players to change if the coach feels like it's time for a change. Now remember, the whole purpose of the aggressive phase is to get the puck out of your defensive zone quickly without icing it. Now, you didn't hear me say skate it out of the zone. I said lob it out of the zone. Now, at the end of this video, down here in the comment section, I'm going to place a video of what happens when the puck bounces down the ice. Oh, and while you're there, leave a comment. Don't worry, I won't get mad at you. This concludes our video on playing shorthanded 4 on 5, phase 1, the aggressive phase. In our next video, we're going to talk about playing shorthanded 4 on 5, phase 2, the passive phase. Check out our other videos on our YouTube channel at https colon forward slash forward slash www.youtube.com slash pass the puck. Please like, follow, and share. Until next time, be safe.